Hello and welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Lab video series. I'm going to be walking through each of the major labs of the Cisco CyberOps Associate NetaCAD curriculum. So let's go and let's jump on in. Alright, so in this lab we are looking at Lab 5.3.7, Introduction to Wireshark. So let's jump into our VM and let's see what we can do. Alright, so this lab is going to be a little special. We have our lab document. So we're going to be using Mininet to virtualize this type of network. So what we need, read, there's two parts, parts one and part two. Part one, install and verify. Part two is capture and analyze. Uh, we're going to be using Wireshark to capture that ICMP based traffic. There's a background scenario, we're going to read it. What we need is the CyberOp workstation. And we're going to work through it. So. Again, lab 537, let's get to our workstation, get logged in. So I'm already logged in, you know what, I will log out, just So you should be seeing it this type of screen, get logged in, cyber ops. So part one is about verifying and setting up everything. So what we're gonna do is Open up terminal. All right, we actually already have a script that will set up these virtual machines. They're not even really virtual machines, it's a virtual connection uh, using uh, Mininet. So we're gonna do this through terminal. We're gonna be running a Python script that sets all of this up. So, sudo squiggly line forward slash lab I'm gonna hit tab so it fills out the dot support dot files script tab it's cyber ops now if you're typing and you're like oh well I hit tab and nothing happens I'm gonna alright so see why hit tab now the problem is there's there's too many things that start with CY. If you tap tab twice, it will give you a list of what's there. So I want to load the cyber cyber op topology.py. Ask for my password, cyber ops. And there we go. We have our topology. It's set up, it added links. It added a virtual switch. It started, started. Started our 10 network and 172 network. Again, this is the network it just virtually built. This is what the screen looks like after running the Python script. So Mininet is working. So we're gonna move on to step three of part one which is, you'll notice our prompt is set up mini net. So we want to go ahead and do extreme H1. So X term H1. We get a terminal for H1. H term for X2, or sorry, X term for yeah, H2. So here we have our two active nodes. That set up H1 and H2 in our virtual environment. At the prompt of H1, enter IP address and verify what's going on. So, H1, IP address. We have a 10.0.0.11 address on H2 IP address. We have a 10.0.0.12 address. That's for H1. Fill out the address chart. So 10. Dots, uh, All right, took me a second, but have the addresses 
there now. So that takes care of part one. Part two is capturing and analyzing ICMP data in Wireshark. So again, it has a blurb. We're going to be pinging between the two hosts, Minicap, and capture the ICMP requests. We're going to examine and capture data on the same LAN, and it reads through all of the steps. So at the top section, display the list of the PDUs captured, yada, yada, yada. All right, so that means it kind of walked us through on what Wireshark is. So let's open up Wireshark and let's see. So let's do Wireshark ampersand. Ah, see so that loads Wireshark inside our headless virtual machine and gives us our nice little capture. I'm going to open up the uh, H1 adapter and here's what we get. The top screen, middle screen, and bottom screen. So, the top screen will display the list of PDU frames captured with a summary of IP packet information. Again, I'm just reading through the lab manual. The middle screen lists the PDU information from the frame in the top part, and then it works all the way down. And then the bottom will display the raw data of each layer. And the raw data is displayed in both hexadecimal and decimal form. So top will give you our detailed lists. Our middle will give us our frame detail. And the bottom will give us our hex and decimal view. All right, so we are now good on our H1. We went ahead and opened it up. on our root SecOps, on our physical machine, because this is still our mini net. Here's root at SecOps analysts. So that's our Wireshark, that's what we have open. We are good. And you'll notice, just by having it open, we've got some router solicitations because it's running, it's active at the moment. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and from we're gonna go ahead and, all right, there we go, on H1, tap enter a few times, get to our terminal, we will ping with a count of five, that means we want to send five data packets. And we're going to send those five data packets to H2. All right, so here we have our initial send response, send response, send response, send and response. We sent five, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice as I select a packet, the details down here change. This breaks us down on our frame, our frame, our layer three protocol, and our layer four protocol. If you ever looked at the IP headers or the frame headers, you can see the way the headers are broken down in detail, each frame Oh, this is an IP packet. So each uh, IP header will give you the individual item as you break down the IP header. And we're going to get into that in a little bit later. All right, so we navigate it. We're going to stop our capture. Red button. That means it's no longer listening. We only captured 19 packets, which that's okay. But we can analyze the detail. So let's say... We don't want the ARP, we don't want the ICMP v6, the router solicitations. If we just want ICMP, we can go to our filter. This area up here is our filter. Most of the time in Wireshark, that is what you spend your most of your time trying to figure out are the filters to analyze the data that you want to collect. I want to look at just ICMP based traffic. 
So now it zoomed in to just displaying ICMP based traffic. All right, so after that, we might want to notice it. Okay, yep. So if we want to look at just the ranking of them, we can hit source. Now we're sorting by source. So here are five requests. Here's our five responses. We can sort by the number or the time. It just really depends. All right, so let's go ahead and choose the first one. From here, we're looking at part two, step G. With this PDU frame, we'll select the top, navigate to the middle section, click on the left Ethernet uh, two row. So we're clicking on the Ethernet details. So we can look at a frame header. We can see the destination, the source, and the type. The data type is again the layer four, or the layer three details. As we get to layer three, they'll also have a type which would be the layer four details. But that way you can see kind of what's inside each of the PDUs. So we can drill down to our destination or our source and we can see the logical long bit, the individual address, the LG, the IG bits. We can see the, the details. We can see the MAC address. We can see the information that we got over here. So our destination was 62 colon 9B colon 05. If we look at the MAC address of H2, we see that they match 62.9B05 F1 1D B8. The destination from this first packet was H2. And we can see that via its MAC address. If we want to drill down, we can also then see the IP4 uh, address. Again, looking at destination. Does the source MAC address match the H1 interface? Source 7325. Seven three two five zero B C three six eight two five. Yes, the source matches H one. Does the nation uh, does the destination Mac match H two? Yep, we've already determined that. All right, so part two, step two: examine the captured data on the remote LAN. All right, so what we're gonna do is. All right, we'll exit out. Quit without saving. Exit out, exit out. It wants us to open up H4 and R1. So X term, H4, H term, R1. Oh, right, gotta type in the right window. X term, R, R1. All right. Again, I will clear that because I have the typo. IP address. IP address for R1. So we can see the details. At the uh, prompt. All right, we already did that. Document the IP addresses and the MAC addresses for H4 and R1, both ETH1 and ETH2. ETH2, R1, ETH1, so we can see those details. All right, from our H4, all right, we're gonna go ahead and wire shark, ampersand, open up H4, all right, we will ping count of five one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot forty. That will be
Well, we'll find out because that is definitely not the IP address that I'm seeing. One seventy two sixteen zero four. All right, we are not getting our connection. That it's a little weird. Oh, okay. I see where I messed up. I'm going to go ahead and reopen up H1 IP address. All right, that gives us our IP address for H1. We're going to go ahead and reopen up Wireshark and present on H1. All right. So, ping H4 from H1. So, there we go. I mistakenly did the wrong one. So ping taxi count of five one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot forty. All right, there it goes. We have our five requests. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's filter by ICMP. So review the packet capture, notice, let's see what we can see. So going from source to destination, source being H1 to destination H4, let's see what's going on. All right, so is the MAC address of the destination H4? So the MAC address at this interface That's soup back zero. All right, so here we are right here. H0, MAC address AA61. That doesn't match. What about R1? Does any of these ones match? So again, we look at the MAC address for E0, this is CA, AB, well, that doesn't match. What about ETH1? ETH1, 420F0B, there it goes. The reason is MAC addresses are used for local communication. So, to go from H1 to H4, H1 communicates with R1's LAN interface. That happens to be the ETH1 interface with the MAC address 4205. R1 will receive the frame, realize it has to leave this local network and send it to a remote network. So R1 will strip out the frame and replace mm -hmm. it with a new frame on this network up here. R1 to R4 will use the MAC addresses between these two hosts. MAC addresses are used for local communication. So that means for each hop, they're going to replace the data frame and it includes the MAC address per each hop. The layer four detail, or sorry, the layer three details, the IPv4 address remains the same. The layer four details remain the same. Only between hops are the layer one and layer two PDUs stripped away and removed. All right. So to clean up all the processes that were used, what we can do is go back to Mininet, type quit, All right, there we go, quit. To clean all of this up, we can do a sudo mntacc, and that will clean up all of the, type in the right password, 
cyber ops. It will clean up and purge any of the old data, uh, setting up any of the items that were created using Mininet. That way we can keep moving forward on other labs. All right, so that takes us to the end of the lab, 5.3.7, basic introduction to Wireshark. Again, questions, issues, anything, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you. All right, so that does it for this lab video. A few suggestions would be, one, run through the lab a second time, trying to do it by yourself. Two, I would do a summary of kind of what you learned, where you struggled, and keep that type of journal going so that you can build off of it. Third, and finally, take time to reflect. These labs start off fairly easy and then they grow in complexity, so some of the labs you may have to redo a few times to fully grasp what's going on. If you have any questions or any concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.